That's a lovely shot. Just leaned into that. Resolute, single-minded, inflexible. Courageous, gifted and funny. This is Graham Gooch, Essex man who captained England. Of all the strokes we've seen played in this match, you'll see nothing better than that. The favourite son of Leytonstone played 118 test matches for his country and led them on 34 occasions. He scored 20 test hundreds, made a monumental 333 at Lords against India and his 8,900 runs make him the third highest run scorer of all time. This is Essex County Cricket Club, where the Gooch story began and where the heart of the man truly lies. It has been my home ground for 20 odd years now. Hasn't changed a lot, it's got a little bit bigger one end and we've got the cinema seats in now and there's a bit more space for the players. But yeah, it's, it's been many a happy day and um, evening here after matches, after hopefully knocking a few off and uh, getting a few wickets and Essex win a few games, so it's a good spot. I think people say that England was a side that I enjoyed playing for but Essex was a side that I was besotted with and uh, I think that's reasonably true. I mean, I, I really... Uh, found it a great honour representing my country and there's no higher honour uh, than that for a cricketer to play for England and captain England but playing for Essex to me has been something special coming like locally from sort of uh, the London end of Essex. It was in the glory year of 1979 that Essex finally broke the shackles of underachievement. I've been playing a long long time and uh, I'm the only one left now from that 79 side which I think probably in Essex history is, is the, the special year because um, we won two trophies and Essex have been noted for never winning anything for a hundred years and we were one of the only counties that, that had that sort of uh, record and to win that Benson Hedges Cup in 79 in front of 20 or 1,000 Essex supporters as far as we were concerned was a, was a great triumph and it really broke the mould. hit from this strong man of the Essex and England side, Graham Gooch. <laughs> Super shot that was. And Graham Gooch is not even bothering. And it's all over for him. The end of a memorable performance is from Graham Gooch. A magnificent 120. We won the championship and then we went on to have, say, 10, 15 years of a lot of success. But success was not a word linked with his miserable test debut in 1975. England had just come off the back of a real tanning from Lillian Thompson and the newspapers were calling for younger blood, etc, etc, etc. We've heard it all before. And I was the guy sort of thrown in at the deep end. And I was playing all right, but, you know, I lost confidence a little bit. The pair caught down the league side in the first inning, which is always a disappointing dismissal as a batsman, as we know got a good ball in the second innings and then my confidence really went for the rest of that season and I didn't really make it back till 78. Oh what a good delivery but he did pretty well to get an outside edge to it. A very sad moment for Graham Gooch, a pair in his first test match. But the, one of the fundamental changes in my career was the fact that um, in 78 um, Keith Fletcher decided to make a tactical change at Essex and I moved up to open. And opening really gave me the responsibility to improve my game. My technique wasn't in order then. And I had to get my head up level on a technical basis. My head had to be level and eyes level as the bowler delivered the ball. When people say, do you recommend this for youngsters coming through? I'd say no. You've got to start off with a conventional stance and make your own adjustments and your own adjustments to your game, whatever it is, to suit yourself and whatever works for you. Gooch assumed the captaincy of England full-time in 1990 and his batting blossomed beyond recognition. I think the captaincy had a real positive effect on, um, on my batting. Uh, coupled with that, um, around about 89, when I had a dreadful series against Australia, especially against Terry Alderman, I mean, he used to say one word to me, how's that? And I used to say, goodbye, Terry. Um, and because I didn't spend too long at the crease when he was bowling. And I think that made me realise that I had to make some adjustment to my game. Well, of all ways to go, Gooch has found the ultimate now, caught and bowled. And the captaincy coinciding with this change in, slight change in technique um, really made my batting go from strength to strength. And I think that sort of um, subconscious sort of uh, um, responsibility of being captain drove me on to uh, have more success than maybe I, uh, I'd had in my freer days as just a player. There is more to Graham Gooch than meets the eye. 
His wit and the enjoyment of his friends and supporters is not publicly appreciated. As we drove to one of his many winter engagements, we chatted about the dark days and that infamous rebel tour to South Africa in 1982. First went there in 1975. So I, had, I had sympathies with the, what the South African cricketers wanted to do and their authorities were trying to put their house in order, albeit slowly, and they, they were going along the right line. So, um, I had friends and, and was, you know, keen to, to visit there at some stage in my future career. So when the chance came to go on tour in 1982, uh, what I would consider a private tour, um, when we weren't contracted to the country or county, then I, I took up the chance. In hindsight, I would uh, say that it wasn't a wise move taking on the captaincy. Nobody at that stage knew what the reaction would be from uh, the cricket authorities, the Test and County Cricket Board, because there was no rules or regulations or laws in place stating that you couldn't play cricket in South Africa. Banned for three years and wounded by the accusations of disloyalty, Gooch was not back in the England side until the triumphant summer of 85, when David Gower's team regained the ashes. But the South African controversy lingered, and at various times in the middle 80s, Gooch was a brooding and sometimes unhappy figure. On certain occasions, I felt that I've been hard done by in the Caribbean in 86. What people don't know probably is I went through a lot of um, to and fro with the West Indies governments to, to allow me to go and play, so to speak, or, or to clear the way after I wrote a book about my feelings about South Africa. And I thought it was all done and dusted. And then some of the West Indies politicians, or one in particular, made some comments in the paper afterwards, you know, which I, it was obviously plainly against what I thought, and I just wanted to correct the matter, and I wasn't allowed to by the Test and County Cricket Board, so I wasn't very happy about playing. David Gower persuaded me to, to uh, continue playing on that tour, but I wasn't a happy man on that tour. And there, was, there, was a, there was about 15 other guys who weren't happy either, because they had to face Malcolm Marshall, Joel Garner, Michael Holding. I think Patrick Patterson said he made a debut in that, in that series as well. I think he was the off-spinner, actually. He's only about 350 mile an hour off than I've ever seen. If sometimes unhappy, away from cricket, he illustrates his sense of fun. A couple of years ago, I went to uh, whitewater rafting on the Zambezi down in Victoria Falls, and um, if anyone ever tells you that's a sport, they're lying, I'm afraid. That's, um, it's pretty dangerous and it's a bit hairy, and uh, I must admit, I thought my I thought my life flashed before me when I came out of the raft, the very first rapid we went down. Um, because um, they've got a beer over there, you probably know, called Zambezi beer. Yeah, well, we used to drink that by the night time and we used to drink the river by the daytime. And the one in the evening is a lot better, I can tell you, because I must have swallowed gallons of that river. And it was real hairy. Good fun, but real hairy. Hairy indeed. And talking of hair... Um, yeah, I've had the hair fixed um, by a company called Advanced Hair Studio. They approached me in Australia on the tour last year. Greg Matthews and Graham Yallop, two uh, former Australian cricketers, had had the hair treatments called strand by strand replacement. And I thought about it and I thought, well, it looks so good, why not give it a go? And uh, I had it done midway through the summer. And I turned up to my first match uh, with the new head of hair at Swansea. And I met all the lads from Essex down the, the restaurant in the evening. They all got on the top of their chairs in the middle of a cr crowded restaurant and all looking and prodding it and everything. And um, since then, it's had the seal of approval because no one really mentions it a lot now, so it must look all good. OK, so I'm, I'm pretty pleased that uh, I've had it done. I've got to go left here because I don't know where I am. Um, what was I saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing now. I don't normally laugh, you see. But you've got a reputation of being miserable. You have to live up to it. So the media tell me anyway. Watching Sky Sports Gold. Live NFL action this week. Tampa Bay, a side struggling to put together playoff form, visit high flying Green Bay. Could this NFC Central Division clash see a change in fortunes? Or have Green Bay simply got that touchdown habit? Explosive NFL action, exclusively live, Sunday night at 6, Sky Sports 2. Did you see that? Come on, pull over. All right. <laughs> All right. Back to her on an ocean of sorrow. 
Turn on to CMT on the hour, every hour, and you could win a holiday to America. The wonderful world of the techno junkie. Surf the net, sniff the future. What's your smiling? You know what I say? Grow up. Get this. Virtual lager. Virtual bottle. Virtual color. Literally no taste. Here's some hardware I interfaced with earlier. Colston pills. Apparently it's fitted with an obsolete component. Flavor. Hey man, get wired. Get a life. Oh, hello. Come on in. Let me show you my newest invention, ComQuest PC, the talking computer that makes learning fun. With ComQuest PC, you can learn the basics of typing, brush up on your spelling, and improve your memory. With ComQuest, the fun never stops. You can compose songs, even animate your own cartoons. See how fun and amazing this invention is. ComQuest. ComQuest Junior and ComQuest Plus from Team Concepts. Want to travel to the United States? See superstar Garth Brooks live in concert? Well, you can get there by watching country music television any hour on the hour. Turn on to CMT, the spirit of America. The courage of Graham Gooch was never better displayed than in his battles with the West Indies. Against them and against India, he played some of history's finest innings. What then were his own fondest memories? Um, for England, I think um, there's, there's two of the most memorable things in my career would have been um, two victories over the West Indies. One where I played a significant role with the bat, one where I particularly didn't in Jamaica in 1990. Um, I, I didn't do much with the bat, but we had a great victory, and that was a, a to captain that side, lead lead that side over those five days was a fantastic experience. Um, um, in the one at Headingley in 1991, when I managed to score 150 in the second innings, we probably set up the position for a win there. First test that we uh, beaten uh, had beaten the West Indies in England for I don't know 20 odd years or whatever. Um, that was my, I would consider my best innings technically, um, out of any innings I've ever played, probably. Real authority about that one. Well, that just might be it and is. And that really is a wonderful hundred. Fine shots played by Gooch in the last two overs, one off Marshall and uh, now off Courtney Walsh. That's a great shot. If anything's in the wrong area now, he's so quickly onto it. That's 150 for Graham Gooch in the context of the match and on this pitch and against this attack I doubt whether he's played a final innings for his country A year earlier, Gooch had rewritten the record books by becoming only the twelfth man in history to make a triple century in a test during a quite marvellous match against India at Lords It was a great game I, I think um, more than anything else it was the best game of, of cricket I've ever played in It had everything for the spectator that game and I feel very honoured to score a triple hundred, especially at a ground like Lord's. To me, without doubt, the best cricket ground in the world. I don't think there's any ground that comes close to Lord's as a ground anywhere. Um, for the atmosphere, the feeling, the history, the tradition, you can roll, roll out all the cliches, but it is the best place to play cricket. There's no doubt about that. Oh dear. Oh, well, wow. six runs. That 
could be it. What a nice way to bring up your 100. Played some lovely strokes today, Graham Gooch. Although he was put down at 36, I'd rate that as one of the very best test match innings I've seen him play. Tremendous blow, lovely footwork, six runs over extra cover. going to race away from uh, Sidhu. He'll just get it inside the ropes. And Gooch will go on to a double century. It's a lovely innings. I can't recall having seen him play better. Oh, dear me. Shut the whole morning. Cracking shot, none better than that though. Beautiful. 250 comes up, 252. So now Gooch on the threshold of this new Lord's record. And there it is. 254, DG Bradman, Australia against England at Lord's in 1930. bowled by Ravi Shastri. 66 to go. Don't bother looking for that, let alone chasing it. It's gone up into the building works. Got him. Probably gone inside edge. Success finally. Gooch goes. 333. I thought the only disappointing thing about it is that I only really thought about the record, Gary Sober's record at the time, 365, after I was out. Once I got to 300, um, I didn't think about it at all. I just went on and tried to get as many runs I could as quickly as I could and just run out of steam. But um, everything went right for me that day. You know, the ball hit the middle of the bat, found the gaps. They dropped me once. I had the luck and you hit a few good shots. So that's the way it went. All seemed rosy in the Gooch Garden, but controversy bounced back less than three years later when David Gower was not selected to tour India. Previously, they had been friends. Now the story took a dramatic twist. I played with David. Our careers really coincided over many, many years. And I don't think in my time there's been any finer uh, left-handed batsman or batsman that's played for England in the middle order and uh, someone who's entertained thousands of them from thousands of cricket lovers and supporters the world over and an absolute delight to watch as a player. I'm very disappointed that our relationship has deteriorated uh, to a degree over the years since I became captain. Um, we had a few scrapes and a real, I suppose, difference is opinion about how you go about things on the field and how you, what example you set. And I think, I suppose, uh, looking from my side of it, um, I probably expected um, a bit more out of David than he gave me just with the bat on the field. But David has always gone about his cricket in his own way, he's his own man, and he's always prepared himself in that way. And I, I probably didn't want to change him, but I was rather hoping and expecting that I could get him to set a, an example, a bit more of an example, in the way he prepared and looked, in, looked into his cricket um, for a lot of the younger players in the side. And I personally don't think I, I got a lot of that for him. And I probably um, didn't think too highly of that. We had one or two scrapes um, after that. In hindsight, um, picking him for India, we maybe should have taken him. Um, I told him at the time, and I still stand by it, that when we selected the side, I didn't particularly want um, too many players of the older generation. It was nothing to do with the fact that he was too old, or I was too, whole, too old, or Mike Gatting was too old. But I think you have, to, you have to sort of blood players for the future and try and bring them on. In hindsight, I think we should have taken him and he would have been a, an asset to the side. Honest as ever. Gooch had been reared in the tribal togetherness of the East End and often lent on his mentors. At Essex, that man was Keith Fletcher. For England, it was Kenny Barrington. He was the first coach influence I had at, at international level. 
Gibbs to Barrington now. And a beautiful shot. He's going for six. Six it is. What a marvellous way to complete his century. Kenny was uh, assistant manager in 78 in Australia and manager in the West Indies, but he unfortunately um, passed away with a heart attack. And he was always one to encourage. He was a great player, really epitomised the sort of bulldog spirit of an England player. They always used to say when he went out to the bat, it was like having the Union Jack on his chest. But one thing he was not, he was never one as a great player to tell you, I told you so, or I was, it was better in my day, or the players and, and the era was better when I played. He was just full of positive things and encouragement, and he was a very special man. So who gave this skillful and practical cricketer the hardest time? Well, in bowling terms, Malcolm Marshall, without a doubt. He's the one who got me out the most times that I can remember. I always remember him um, knocking my off stump out or getting me caught behind or LBW or... Any, every, every way you can get out, he got me out. Oh, close. Yes. It was a terrific ball from Marshall. He was fast, he was intelligent, he swung the ball. That's a lot of trouble for a batsman. <laughs> I really enjoyed batting against Shane Warne. It was a great contest for me, one I enjoyed immensely, one I gained a lot of enjoyment from. In the short time that he's been playing test cricket, I think he's the most exciting bowler around in the game at the moment. He's great for the game of cricket to promote the game. And he's a delight to watch, and he's certainly, I think, the best spinner I've seen. And this is super stuff. Oh, and then out. Look to full toss, but uh, who can deny Warren anything because he's bowled brilliantly. And which batsman gave him the most pleasure? The three that really stand out are Alan Border, Viv Richards, and Barry Richards. Now, if you said to me, who's my favourite player, I would say Barry Richards, because he, he was in his pomp uh, when I came into the first-class game. But he was such an elegant player and had all the shots all the time, and he was the one to watch and the one to emulate for me. The familiar form of Richards getting the game underway in typical fashion. Glorious for crack through extra cover, the first ball of the match. There's a cheeky shot indeed, give himself room and that's it, no problem at all. Takes him through to a truly magnificent hundred. The best player I'd probably played against um, in terms of pure destruction is Viv Richards. When he walked to the crease, you knew he was the boss and he showed you. He was awesome in the late 70s, early 80s. He had a magnificent eye, such power, such arrogance about himself as a batsman. Oh, that's a good shot before. And that's it, flipped away nonchalantly and elegantly. So Richard's going on to a second double century in this Test match series. If I had someone to bat for my life, then that would be Alan Border, because he took some getting out. He was a fantastic performer. Not, not the most elegant, but, but a, a great stroke maker and a guy that you really have to bowl at. Playing lovely shots like that. They won't catch that. Here it is. Give him this applause. Wonderful innings from uh, just about the most durable cricketer you could ever imagine, Alan Border. Cricket is a fun game. There's great memories for me throughout my career, as I'm sure for most players who've played first-class cricket. And that's one of the beauties of the game, and that's, that's one of the very special things about the game, the sort of friendship, uh, the, the, uh, the memories, the camaraderie you get from being in a team, 11 people in together, different situations, you go through funny, funny times, some bad times, but in the end, it's always enjoyable, and uh, we play it for fun, above all else.